by heading over to the library so I could pick up some books. Yes, honey. I didn't get to play. You guys, filming with three little kids is hard work, okay? Um, first stop was the library so that I could pick up some more books that I ordered um, to finish up the videos, my planning videos for you guys. And then I also stopped by the discarded book um, section and I picked up a few goodies. They like to run through these trees every time we walk back from the library. <laughs> all right so now i have to head back home such a task to get to and from the library that's right down the street <laughs> hi guys i'm back okay so where do i start <laughs> i'm gonna try my best to walk you through how i organized my thoughts and planned out our year i don't know how comprehensive this will be but this is just what i did so these are all my books and telling you how I how I did things. Yeah, now I can kind of show you what I got from the discarded section in the library. Um, I love Steve Jenkins books. They're always in my Amazon cart. This one was just 25 cents. So this is just the Beetle book. The Secret Life of Money, A Kid's Guide to Cash for Cameron. Like 25 cents, why not? The Very Hairy Bear, Ron's Big Mission. And then the last thing that I got was Jane the Fox and Me. The people that I watch on YouTube are probably nothing like what you think I would watch. Um, <laughs> I'm obsessed with watching um, artist videos. There's a few channels that I watch regularly and this book came up in one of the books that they love. So I recognized it when I went to the library and I just wanted to pick it up. I don't actually know what it's about. I just know that they thought it was really wonderful. So sorry this is all over the place. The other ones should be a little bit more straightforward. Um, I was saying on my Instagram stories that I was going to be filming today, my whole planning process. So this video is probably going to be split up into maybe like eight or nine videos because I don't want this video to be super duper long. So this one we're just going to chit chat about how I organize like my thoughts and our goals and things like that. How I kind of like organize myself when I go to plan a new year. And then after this, I think I will break down all of my curriculum picks for homeschooling multiple children by subject though. So I'll do that one video for each subject to lay out all of my picks and how I plan on using them. And then at the end, I'll do three videos, a day in the life, video for each of the kids following each of them around that'll kind of show you what each of them are doing for their grade level um, and how I kind of put all of the curriculum together so in the end it'll probably end up being maybe 12 videos 10 12 videos or so hope you don't mind but like I said I can't have this video be like an hour and 30 minutes so it'll just be better if I can just split them up into separate videos I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to communicate this to you guys. So the very first thing that I do is um, I went ahead and did about a week or so of assessment time. Um, that gives me some time and space to like really spend individual time with them and see if there's some things that I have been missing along the way. Um, some things that I thought they were doing extremely well in and maybe they needed a little bit of help in or whatever else. So you guys know I did that. And then after I finish that up, then I just sit down with a piece of paper and try to organize my thoughts and how I'm going to tackle each section that's going to need a little bit of attention. Um, figure out what I'm going to do differently this year, um, what I'm going to get rid of, what I don't need anymore. And for example, what I mean by that is you, you guys know that I have been using um, time for learning. And I had two accounts, one for each boy. And um, I just decided that this year, I mostly use it as a safety net and a guide to help me when I am 
you know, just not as confident on times when I'm not as confident or where I need a little bit of assistance and then also like for homework time um, to keep them busy and always learning. With each year, I become a little bit more confident and so this year I feel like I don't need it um, the way that I have been using it in the past. I think I am going to keep it. I'm going to keep it for sure, but instead of having two accounts, I'm just going to keep one account and um, I'm going to still use it for like random homework time when I need to keep them busy. And then I'm also using it to help me with my planning, to help give me um, a structure or a little extra assistance when I'm having um, a, a hard time. So I'm just going to have one time for learning the account now. So um, that is one change that I made. We are no longer using Learn With Homer. I love Learn With Homer and it worked extremely well with my boys, but I noticed it is not working as well with my daughter, so who is the one that would be using it now. I recognized that I was going to need to do a little something a little different with her. So um, I went ahead and canceled Learn With Homer um, for us this year. Those were the basic changes that I made. And then after that was cleared up, um, I just kind of organized my thoughts on a piece of paper. I'll show you my piece of paper. It's not gorgeous, but uh, <laughs> I don't know if you can see that or not. <laughs> but I just used a sheet of paper to scribble down some of my thoughts and to kind of organize myself on how I was going to tackle each thing. So the very first thing that I started with was um, my portfolio, which you guys already know we I do my portfolio in Evernote. After I finish that, then I will work on my goals. Dropbox and Notability, which is basically my like electronic worksheets. And I'll tell you more about that in a little bit. For five, I'm gonna be working on apps, Pinterest, and YouTube. My YouTube playlist, my Pinterest boards, and then whatever apps that I'm swapping out or changing or upgrading or whatever. And after that, I'm gonna be working on books. So just sorting through the books that we're going to be using this year for curriculum. And then the new thing that I am using I'm gonna try it out for a month or so and see how it goes but it's a site called epic.com I think it's getepic.com. anyway I'll get into that in a little bit the seventh step for me is going to be working on my wish list and shopping for supplies and then the last thing that I'll be doing is um, just planning, getting my planning supplies together. This year I'm gonna be using a bullet journal and I feel like this video is gonna be really long, you guys. Oh well. <laughs> okay, so the very first thing that I'm gonna be doing is working on my portfolio in Evernote. So I basically told you how I um, use Evernote mostly and that's another thing. I have been wanting to do homeschool record keeping a certain way since the beginning. But when you have a certain thing in mind, you, you start off by giving it a try or starting something. And then over the years, you kind of tweak it and simplify it to make sure that it fits and works for you. So Evernote is something that I started using in the very beginning, but I did nothing with it the first year because I overcomplicated everything. And this is, when I show you guys what I do, you may think this is complicated, but just think about four years ago when I started and how complicated I really made things. <laughs> so over the years, I have simplified things and they're starting to work better and better for me. And I will show you how I'm using that. But basically at the end of the year, I take whatever I did um, actually compile in our portfolio from the previous year and I kind of archive it and then um, make new stacks of notebooks in Evernote um, to plan out this coming year. So I'm just basically going to show you how I set up my Evernote notebooks for this year of school. I start by taking all of the notebooks that I have for the previous year and um, putting them all into one stack and archiving that. And then after that, I start with um, building up whatever notebooks I want for this year. And how I've been doing it is I have one notebook for my homeschool curriculum resources. I have another notebook for my homeschool planner. And then I have 
a separate notebook for each child representing their year of school. So for Cameron this year, this is his third grade, quote unquote, third grade year of school. For Kendall, this is his quote unquote, first grade year of school. And then um, for Savannah, this is her quote unquote, preschool year of school. So I have one notebook for each of them. I have a homeschool curriculum resources notebook and then I have a homeschool planner notebook. Now last year I didn't have a homeschool curriculum resources notebook but this year I want to give it a try. I may not use it extremely well but in my mind it's going to work so <laughs> I might as well give it a try. And then for my homeschool planner that's also new for me. I did not do that last year inside of Evernote. Um, I just did it in with my planning pages. So all I'm doing is really I'm just taking my same planning pages and recreating those inside of Evernote so that it's easier for me to access from anywhere. I noticed what I was doing with my um, my notebook pages, which you may not do, but I was totally doing, is uh, I was planning everything out and then I was taking things out to reference them and then I was leaving them behind in different places. And then when I couldn't find it, that was a problem. So this way I thought that if I made sure that I had everything planned out in Evernote, I always have access to it and I never run the risk of losing it. So that's why I wanted to do it this way um, this time around. Also because of the way I'm using the electronic notebooking system deal. So I'll show you inside of the notebooks. So um, each of the children's notebooks is is pretty simple um, it's just gonna be a notebook and inside of it will be um, a page and I'll create a new page each time we have a new week of school and basically I will take whatever we completed from the planner section and I will copy that into their notebook that represents what they did for that week of school so that's gonna be pretty straightforward and simple and maybe I will um, show you more of how I do that in the future when we actually get into completing our weeks of school but that's how that's gonna go then um, I have I'll talk about the homeschool curriculum resources because that'll be fairly simple so I have five notes inside of that notebook and each of them are books learning kits living books websites and worksheets and basically I the idea was to have an electronic log of all of the resources that I have because like I said in a previous video Evernote is searchable so if I get a new resource and I go in and just kind of highlight each of the topics that are covered, then when I am going to learn about a certain subject, I can go in, or a certain topic, I can go in and search that topic and it should show me every resource that I have that I can pull from. It, I, I felt like it was a brilliant idea. <laughs> now, actually getting it to work will be the other thing but I think this will be really helpful to me because a lot of times we get resources and we totally forget that there were certain things in there that we could have used or pulled from so I thought if I just keep a log of what I have um, then I can go in and search and it'll automatically show me everything that I actually have that I can use instead of feeling like I don't have anything and then you're kind of you know, you go out and try to get new stuff and then you realize later that you had something that you could have used. So I'm going to give this a try and see how it works. It may not work this year, but I'm going to keep trying until it works like I had in my head for it to work. So anyway, the real notebook that is going to be of interest to you is going to be my homeschool planning notebook so I kind of sort of set it up basically like I do my um, planning pages but the first section I have the first note I have in this notebook is the homeschool calendar it's basically just that it's just a calendar that lays out the months so that I can input all of my dates that I would like to remember like Earth Day I don't know Memorial Day President's Day I forget those types of things and the next thing you know it's right around the corner and I forgot to add a little something to our plans to kind of celebrate that then I also just have a layout of my school days so my school days we do school from Monday through Thursday we still learn every single day um, is just not as structured we have structured school days Monday through Thursday and then I lay out my school weeks which is basically 38 I think public school has 36 weeks of school so we actually have 38 and then I lay out my vacation weeks which is 14 
So I have 14 weeks of vacation that I can move around as I'd like. Um, the way we've been doing it so far since we started year-round homeschooling was I just have a, a one week off every month. And so basically that's that equals one week a month and then I have 10 floating days that I can pull from um, where, when I want to. The reason why I laid it out like that is just because I, I know that I'm able to keep track in my head and I, I can eliminate that guilty feeling when you have other things that come up and you know, you may not be doing, you know, you may need an extra day or two, you know, <laughs> or three or four. But this way I know that I can pull from this time or we can like forge through and give up our week for this month so that we can exchange it for another month when we're going to be going out of town you guys i'm trying so hard to film this video for you guys and i love having my kids in the background but recently they have gotten so loud and that's why you don't see them lately <laughs> they are so Anyway, sorry about that. Well, um, on my homeschool calendar, it just lays out the months for me so I can see month at a glance, year at a glance, what we have coming up. And then I can also just keep a tally of the school weeks and our vacation days. Um, I'll skip down to our homeschool yearbook. It's pretty self-explanatory. Anytime I want to add any photographs or any memories or any videos, I just wanted them to be all in one place. This may have been a good idea and it may have not, but I figured I might as well give it a try. So I have a section for a homeschool yearbook. Um, homeschool unit studies. So basically I have about 10 unit studies, I think. Maybe it's eight to 10 unit studies where the studies are lasting between three to four weeks. Um, this is in addition to our regular core work. So if we get to add these things on, then great. And if we don't, then it's not a big deal. But I wanted to have it laid out ahead of time. So I basically just took way too much time to add a few pretty photos to the beginning of each unit because that's just how I operate. And you probably shouldn't do that because it was probably a waste of time. <laughs> But then underneath that, I just lay out each of the activities, whatever field trip, and then I add any links to any videos or, you know, any documentaries or anything like that that we could use to help us explore that unit study. And I just have little check boxes next to each one of them so that when we complete them, I can just check them off because you all know how much I love check boxes. As you can see, I have the color unit, I have the ocean unit, human body, flight, outer space and then my next note has weather and seasons then i have biomes the grow unit um, neighborhood unit and dinosaurs i think that's the last one and how I, I i got most of my information i gathered that together in my pinterest boards over time and that is where a lot of these photos come from and a lot of these links come from i organize my thoughts in pinterest um, you know, every time I just need a little bit of stress relief, I go and search a certain unit topic and just add it to my board. So, fun stuff. So now let's talk about homeschool goals. This is a major portion of laying out my plans for the year. And it's basically just like I had the homeschool goals on paper in my last curriculum video. It's the same thing, except for I moved that over into electronic form. And I just lay it out by subject. I will go more into detail of what I have chosen for us and then the curriculum um, pieces that I have chosen to help me teach those things um, as I break them up by subject in the videos that are going to come after these. But basically, I just lay out all of my goals. Now, I do get a little bit of help in certain areas like language arts. Um, that is where I use things like time for learning and um, I think it's k12reader.com. I use those places to help me uh, figure out what is the natural progression of what kids are learning. I mean, it's really kind of simple if you think about it. I think that sometimes we just need a little help knowing that we kind of know what to do. 
you know um because when you first have your child you start teaching them the abcs like that's the first thing you need to know like, you need to know the letters and the sounds in order to start building the words in order to start building the sentences and that's basically what language arts is it just seems very over complicated because of how they lay it out in order to teach it in school so um i think that once it helps me, you know, get my thoughts together when I can see things like on the curriculum that's laid out on Time for Learning or on the K-12 Reader, I can see that, okay, language arts, the next thing they're gonna be doing is learning about um, verbs and nouns. And it's like, oh, okay, I get it. I get what you're trying to do. And then you can find a way to teach those things yourself. For me, um, I found that the kids do a much better job just learning that thing first and then me going back and identifying what it is that they already know. I think I'm kind of taking that approach if that makes any sense. But what really helps me is being able to look at some other like common core laid out um, curriculum to see what it is that is the next step for them to teach in that area so i get a little help in the language arts area and i will explain that more in the video where i talk about what i'm using and what i'm doing for language arts so i basically just lay out each subject bible language arts reading writing uh, spelling um, and I'll all go into further detail about that in their separate videos. That's basically what's inside of um, my Evernote portfolio and how I set that up. The next thing I do is a binders, composition, and art books. So I basically go through the ones from last year, pull out whatever I need to pull out, simplify the process a little bit, however I'm gonna simplify it, and then set it up so it's nice and clean for this new year. And so the first thing I started with was our binder. I was really extra with our binders in the very beginning because I laid everything out by subject. I couldn't really figure out like what I wanted to do with it. Now I've gotten to the place where I know that it just holds our basic supplies mostly. So I have a little stack of their writing paper is inside of their binder and then I have two folders for housing any loose papers that they're working on and that goes inside of their binder and then I have a little what's it called a pencil holder under that holds the pencils their color pencils their little sharpener um, their little passport an eraser that type of thing and then I have whatever resources that we're using uh, most frequently so in this case it's just a little laminated map that's inside of that binder then the next portion is my composition notebooks you guys know <laughs> I adore my composition notebooks and again when I first started using them I was very extra about it and really didn't know how it was going to fit in so I had a lot of composition notebooks that had maybe three or four pages filled out and then the rest of them had coloring little doodles that the kids did randomly and sometimes they had the wrong things inside of the wrong composition book so <laughs> I feel like those things just kind of happen and you kind of learn to tweak it and figure it all out you know as you move along what I have decided to do is continue on with that process and continue separating them by subject and I'll just include any physical worksheets or things like I mentioned before that I want to keep inside of that specific subject I'm still gonna forge through and see if I can do a better job at disciplining ourselves to keep the proper items inside of the proper notebook so I just went through and since I did have a lot of composition notebooks that weren't you know even halfway full I would just rip out a few pages and log them log those items wherever they need to go and then I just am still going to use the rest of that composition notebook and then whichever composition notebooks that I need to replace, then I go and purchase those items. I have that on my list of things to purchase on my shopping day. Then after that, art books. Same deal. I clear out our art books, see if I can reuse it. If not, I'll go get a new one. So that's how we're doing that. The next thing I moved on to is my electronic work 
worksheet system. So I'm really excited about this because I am not a fan of worksheets. <laughs> I've said this in the past. Um, I like being able to do the practice on the worksheets. I'm trying to be kinder to the trees. We already use a lot of paper in like our little maker space. So I don't want to use extra paper with a bunch of worksheets that just end up everywhere and I don't know what to do with. So um, it just makes more sense it makes more sense for us to be able to complete um, worksheets on our devices. And I figured out a way to do that. So um, how we are doing that is I am using both Dropbox and the app called Notability. And on the Notability app, you're able to just basically completely fill out um, the worksheet as if you would on a real piece of paper or a real worksheet. And I love that. So um, I can even change the color of the um, mark to red if I want to correct a certain worksheet. So how I'm doing that is whatever worksheets that I download, I include them into my homeschool Dropbox account. And then Dropbox connects with Notability and I can upload them and include whatever worksheet I need to for them to be able to fill out for the day if we're gonna be using worksheets. So um, I set up that whole system this is where this is where a lot of these come in so that they can fill out their worksheets inside of their notability app from dropbox the next thing i did was set up my apps so i needed to clear off whatever apps we weren't using anymore and then add any apps that were going to be um, additions to our curriculum choices by subject so i needed to sort through my apps my pinterest boards which basically i already talked about i just went to my pinterest boards and added um some new things that i found during my therapy time i just added them to my boards and um created any new boards that i wanted to create which i didn't really have anything new to create because i already had everything under the sun <laughs> And then also YouTube, just clearing out my YouTube playlist for the kids um, by subject so that they could go in and watch the videos that we selected and picked and um, have chosen for later to look at. So I just needed to clear that stuff up and get all of that stuff together. So my apps, Pinterest, YouTube, all of my electronic resources, I guess. The next thing I did was my book search. <laughs> my book search so I did a physical book search um, and basically I pulled together all of my books that I was going to be using to help me teach everything that I had laid out in my goals and I went and actually reserved all of those books um, so that I could sit down and do these videos for you so that is what I did did a lot of reserving and collecting books from the library that I'm going to return after I'm finished with these videos and then I, when the time comes i will check out those books for us to actually use to help get through that unit or subject or whatever it is that we are going to be studying for that specific time after that i'm wrapping this up you guys i know it's getting long this is why it's going to be like 9 to 12 videos the next one i did was my wish list so basically anything that I know that we're going to be doing. Um, in the past, I had planned out to do certain projects or certain things and never got around to doing them. So everything that I purchased for that specific um, project was kind of a waste because I really didn't use it yet. I mean, maybe it's not a waste because I will use it eventually, but I'm trying to do be a better steward over our homeschool monies. So um, instead of going out and purchasing all of that thing, all of that stuff together, I just created a wish list. So when it comes time to do that specific project, like a week before it's time, I'll just go ahead and place the orders for those things, and I'll already have the monies available for those things. But I'm not wasting my money by collecting a bunch of stuff that I'm not using just yet, and I may not actually use. So that's where my wish list comes into play. I basically do my wish list um, by building a board on Pinterest and then also um, a wish list on in my app store and then a wish list um, on Amazon. <laughs> so that's how that goes. And then I'm going to be also shopping for any supplies. So I am keeping a list of supplies that I need to make sure that I have stocked up on, like pencils. I need more pencils. Um, and then on one day this week, I'll go out and I'll take you guys with me to pick up those items and maybe look for a few extra fun things just because. So then after that will be my last 
step. The last step in my uh, planning process is to just, it's kind of like a celebratory thing for me. I have all of my stuff planned out inside of my computer and available on my devices and everything and everything is good to go. But I still wanted to actually have a physical planner that I can write in and doodle in and draw in and journal all over and around. Um, and instead of doing something like an Erin Condren planner or a happy planner or anything like that, I wanted to try bullet journaling this time around. So um, it's gonna be kind of like a reward to me for finishing out my planning to go out and um, get a bullet journal and any supplies if needed to try my hand at my first bullet journal for homeschool. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, so I think that's it you guys. We made it to the end of this particular video. <laughs> this is just video one. I don't know how long this is gonna be. I'm sorry, but I'm trying to be um, as thorough as possible because I get a lot of questions about this and um, I don't know, I just kind of wanted to share just in case it was helpful to you. Um, you. Of course, you don't have to do my whole entire process because I'm extra, but uh, this is what works best for me. And um, yeah, it, it, it wasn't that bad. I mean, it seems like a lot, but once you get it all together, I, I, I started to finish, was done with um, planning in a week. And so that's really good for me because in the past it's just taking me a lot of my brain space for a long period of time. And this time around I just did it my way and I got it done. And I had a lot of fun so I just wanted to share that with you. So yeah, that's how I am organizing my planning for this year. And so the next videos are just going to be what we're using for a curriculum, um, homeschooling multiple children. So I will see you guys. <sighs> in tomorrow's video and we will do bible curriculum for um homeschooling multiple children um if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed and leave me any comments or questions that you may have um i know there was a lot in this video so hopefully you stuck around to the end and i will see you in our next video bye